Sky Sports Italy F1 commentator Davide Valsecchi says Max Verstappen will need to dig deep across the next eight races for a chance to secure his fourth straight world championship. Verstappen heads to Azerbaijan with a comfortable 62-point lead over his nearest challenger, McLaren's Lando Norris. But Valsecchi told the sport's official podcast, F1 Nation, that it's not enough for the Dutchman, with his Red Bull RB20 falling behind its rivals on pure pace. They think that uh, Red Bull, to win this driver championship, is going to need uh, a Max Verstappen better than the beginning of the season, better <laughs> than last year Max Verstappen, and better than uh, the Max Verstappen the fight over the limit every single race against uh, Lewis Hamilton. I, I think that uh, they're going to need uh, an unbelievable driver. It's going to be tough for them. Williams team principal James Valls is hoping he can run new recruit Carlos Sainz at the Abu Dhabi postseason test and start his integration with the team ahead of his 2025 debut. Sainz is set to leave Ferrari at the end of the season, his fourth with the Scuderia. But while he's now signed a multi-year deal with Williams, his appearance at the postseason test requires both teams to come to terms, likely financial, on his early release. He's under contract at Ferrari until the end of 2024, Val said. However, I do hope to see him in the car in Abu Dhabi. Ferrari is hoping Austin will confirm that its recent upgrade has solved its high-speed bouncing issues, despite Charles Leclerc's impressive win at Monza, where he won stop to McLaren's two. Ferrari ran a new floor at the last race in Italy to calm its prancing horse. But while it won on debut, Monza, along with Azerbaijan and Singapore ahead, don't have the high downforce corners needed to validate it, making Austin the first proper chance to assess its performance. It's quite difficult to understand the impact of the upgrade on a track like Monza, because we are in such a different configuration compared to the rest of the season said team boss Frederick Vasseur. Staying with Ferrari, which has reshuffled its technical team ahead of Azerbaijan with incoming talent Loic Serra, named as its chassis technical director. Serra, who joins the Scuderia on October 1st, will report directly to team boss Frederick Vasseur. The French engineer will have responsibility for a number of departments, though not the power unit. Like Lewis Hamilton, Sarah is another high-profile signing from Mercedes, along with Belgian Jerome D'Ambrosio, who will head the FDA or Ferrari Driver Academy to boost its young talents. The technical team reshuffle comes in the wake of news that F1 design icon Adrian Newey will be heading to Aston Martin. Two-time F1 world champion Mika Hakkinen says Sergio Perez has not been able to play his part in delivering the flat-out dual-car performance that an F1 squad needs to develop its challenger. Red Bull is struggling against main rival McLaren with just eight points the gap and eight races remaining, while Ferrari in third is just 39 points adrift, meaning it could also pass the energy drink squad. But while Max Verstappen has scored 303 points of Red Bull's 446 total haul, Checo has less than half that, with 143 putting him six spots behind the Dutchman in the driver's standings. Hakkinen, however, says Perez's deficit is influencing the success and that just one driver isn't able to move the team forward. He has had the chance to study himself, to understand himself. What does he need to be the number one? And he has failed to do that, said an impassioned Hakkinen. Mercedes says it's hoping for a return to form in Azerbaijan, following two disappointing weekends at Zandvoort and Monza. 
The Silver Arrows went into the Summer Breakers F1's juggernauts with three wins from the four races up to and including Belgium. But while Mercedes says it expects more close competition, and for rivals McLaren, Ferrari and Red Bull to again be strong, it hopes to join them at the front on the Baku City circuit. We haven't been pleased with our last couple of weekends. We're, we're aiming higher than that. We were hoping to start this final part of the season in the same manner that we finished it, with a, with a few race wins and some strong qualifying. And all of our effort is, is going into trying to get the maximum performance and trying to get back to weekends where we can come back pleased with the job we've done, hopefully come back with some trophies. Yuki Tsunoda says racing for Red Bull's top team remains his goal in F1, but that he isn't afraid to switch squads for a chance to win. 2024 is Tsunoda's fourth season at the pinnacle of motorsport, with the Japanese driver already locked in at RB for 2025. But while staying with the energy drinks brand long term as his focus, Tsunoda told F1's official podcast Beyond the Grid that he wants a consistent top five car. The main priority is the Red Bull Racing. Um, it's the one thing I was aiming since uh, once I joined Formula One. The car is one of the fastest cars right now. I mean, currently probably McLaren is a little bit, a little bit faster, but yeah, I, uh, I just want to you know drive drive with the car at some point and uh, show my potential and drive top four, top three, top two, whatever. Sauber is considering all options for 2025, despite Valtteri Bottas still in pole position to retain his seat at the transitioning squad. Sauber has the last remaining open seat on the 2025 grid, with RBs set to be assigned internally, given five drivers are going for Red Bull's four seats. The Swiss team, therefore, is in complete control. With no shortage of options, including Bottas, Zhou Guan Yu, reserve Teo Porcher, McLaren's F2 title hopeful Gabriel Bortoletto, and more. But while Sauber boss Mattia Bonotto says that the squad cannot accept its most recent performances, with the team yet to score a point after 16 rounds, it also has to lock in who will partner Nico Hulkenberg. We will decide as soon as possible, no doubt, because we need to set up the team for next year and for the future, he said. F1's return to Las Vegas this year will see more on-track action, with the glittering event adding Ferrari Challenge as a support race. Last year's Las Vegas Grand Prix ran without any support races, with the event focused on making the logistics work and under massive pressure, with the high-profile event seen as a championship cornerstone and test for the American market. But with the event a huge success after difficult beginnings, Las Vegas has upped its offering to fans for year two, including Ferrari Challenge, a free fan festival, and an ice rink on top of the Paddock Club. Now we feel much more comfortable being able to extend the operating hours and the track activity, said F1's chief commercial officer, Emily Prazer. Thanks for watching. To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.